hopefully. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, sorry for this. I've known James for over six years now, and he's a great guy, but he can't just make it on two continents at the same time. So he asked me to, to step in and, and, yeah, try and entertain you today. So that's going, you know, about art combining artificial intelligence with human reasoning. Well, um, geology has been, you know, around for 4.5 billion years now, so Mother Nature had enough time to throw very complex tasks at us. And the way we understand it is, at least, let's say, geoscientist training, we train a lot years and years at university and after as junior geos or whatever, uh, to, to arrive at a general understanding. And then after, during our career, we will uh, specialize a bit more, maybe in different tasks. So uh, our understanding will increase significantly in certain task fields or, or task space. Um, well, that's, uh, we tried not to do this at Geoteric. So what we are aiming at is creating uh, narrow AI algorithms. So we hope that by creating these uh, narrow AI algorithms, we will be able to offer sometimes in the future uh, some really spectacular complex interpretation systems. So to start with, we, we have adoptive geobodies, we have facies classification, and we have forts. Forts will be the, the main uh, uh, dish for today's talk. Uh, right, but let's start with the classification. We heard it. Uh, classification is a problem, uh, and in, in, in our solution, um, it's a semi-supervised uh, classification, so the interpreter will apply their knowledge and say, yeah, this is facies one, that's facies two, and depending on the input, depending on the classes, whether they can be actually differentiated, and the experience of the uh, interpreter, what sort of uh, attributes they throw in into this mix because it can be a fairly multi-dimensional classification. The accuracy uh, can be improved, but it, it really depends on, on the interpreter. And let's see the next one. Is the geobody extraction similar? We try and build a, a multi-dimensional um, data set, a probability density function, if you wish, and uh, that will allow us uh, using seed points, again defined by the interpreter, the human uh, factor in this uh, case. And then the algorithm will run around and, and find those points which, which are similar to those uh, that have been highlighted by the, uh, by the user here. So with that, we can extract geobodies uh, using, again, color blends or yeah, a multitude of attributes. Let's just uh, state uh, that. Right, but back to forts, or let's do the forts here. So we, what we did, we uh, uh, developed a, yeah, I, I, James told me to be very careful with my wordings. So I, I'm facing a hang-drawn and quartered uh, treatment if I spill too much here today. So um, that we used a, a multitude of uh, seismic data from different uh, basins, different vintages, different qualities, and we used a, a, a significant number of labeled uh, examples, and with that we could build a foundation network. And then if, if we throw a, a new data set at the foundation network, um, which it hasn't seen before, which wasn't used in the training, then we can test uh, how good it is, obviously. So we can create like, uh, fault interpretation confidence cubes or AI cubes. And of course, uh, fault sticks can also be extracted. We heard it, you know, some of the uh, workflows will change, some of the workflows will go away. But for the time being, fault sticks and fault surfaces seem to be um, staying here, right? It, it's, sorry for that, it, it's not that. Uh, uh, bad in the video. So what we see here is the data set. We throw uh, the foundation network uh, sees it for the first time and we can evaluate the slices or the vertical sections and say the algorithm will say, I think there's a fold there or there will be a fold there. What do you think? And at any given point, um, you know, we give the option uh, for the interpreter to interact to, to actually to train the algorithm how they see the uh, data, what their uh, understanding is. And that is, for example, extracting four sticks and then provide 
a training data set using those. Fix here, fix there, extend this, crop that, merge two pieces of uh, two, two forward sticks. And with that, the expertise can be captured. Uh, and then you just retrain or fine tune, not retrain, yeah, we could call it fine tuning. So you fine tune the network. And once that fine tuning is done, now you have a unique network at your disposal, either personal level, or company level, and then just carry on, calculate, check, uh, control, and then if you're happy with the results or this preview, what you see, and of course, you can run a, a full uh, volume uh, uh, kind of AI fault extraction. What you had, and for clarity or transparency, this is not how it works. This is an edited video. So you won't get all these beautiful colored things. So what we see here is the colors which represent orientations. So basically a fault trend or azimuthal orientation um, um, visualization here. And what we see, these are the faults, fairly clean. Um, we, must, we must say, or I must say, definitely, I quite like this data set. Uh, the fault planes are continuous. Uh, there's not, sorry for this, I don't know what's happening exactly uh, with this kind of bit of a uh, visualization. But what we can then do, of course, compare the data, uh, compare the seismic to, the, to these uh, indications, fault indications. And this is a, uh, a data set from the uh, Dutch part of the North Sea. And uh, our structural geologist compared the, uh, the AI results uh, to his own interpretation and said that we were right. So going back to these, uh, uh, just checking the time. Uh, coming back to um, the uh, traditional interpretation steps, which are still there and will, st will stay with us for quite a few more years. Fault sticks, uh, of course, we can use this uh, or these inputs, these uh, AI fault uh, volumes to, to, to define your fault sticks for you. And then they can be grouped and converted into fault surfaces if you wish. So the manual interpretation or that feeling of an interpreter that they are still in charge, or well, the computer does a good job, but they are still in charge, that is still there. Right, so uh, that data set, although it wasn't perfect, looked nice and clean. There were millions of multiples in that data set, which we've seen before. But yeah, there are cases where you have washed out data, uh, the amplitudes are kind of around zero, plus minus a bit. So what can we do there? And you know, we pride, we are proud of our edge attributes. Uh, some of you might have seen that. We usually tell you that they are really good and extracting the fault uh, indications or lineaments. And they are not doing too bad when it's in the shallow part of the seismic where you have nice and clean amplitude and phase variations, but they seem to fall apart in the deep part of, uh, of, of, of the section. You see that there's not much geology seen there. While if we feed this data set to the algorithm, and again, this is a data set it wasn't trained on, so it sees it for the first time for the sake of this picture. It's, yeah, it's a kind of promising uh, uh, result to, to start with. And again, it can be further fine-tuned. So uh, the question which we have, and, and I, actually I have this question all the time, can I trust the result? So will it turn Sahara green? So what, what does it tell me? So yeah, the, the message that, that, that I get, uh, how can I learn to trust it? So in order to, to do some nice illustrations for you today, uh, it's not just for that, but we, uh, we tested this algorithm, this approach, this foundation network, on a data set from somewhere in Northwest Australia. These are publicly available data, so we can use them. Um, it's fairly big. It's 100 gig when it, uh, it's 4,500 kilo kilometer square, 100 gigabyte in 16 bit. Um, the algorithm finished the data set on, on the in-house hardware in, in around 12 hours. And, uh, but of course, more computing power will give you more uh, um, faster results. So what we have here is a 
rather complex uh, tectonic situation. Different phases of uh, deformations happened. And um, you know, if you're given, given this task to, could you please just go and interpret these thoughts, uh, you will have plenty of time to kind of reconsider your life choices, whether it was really the, the, what you really wanted to do with your time. So what we see here is, is the, the fourth network that was extracted in 12 hours again. Coloring wise, where you see reds, that's kind of low probability, where you, where you see greens, that's the top 5%. So that, that's very, very sure that, it, that there's a food there. And if you don't use it for anything else, but you know, it, it guides you, this is what you will be facing if you start at inline one, and then inline 10, and inline 12, or whatever your spacing might be. And of course, with a bit of a visual, uh, uh, yeah, visualization tricks, we made uh, the, the zero, the background values transparent. So we can just go in, find the fine details, analyze them, look at them. Where are the uh, potential migration paths, if there are any? Uh, where do you have buffer zones? What's the connection between them? And again, if we calculate these uh, for trend uh, attributes, then we can filter on, you know, you, based on their orientations, if you wish. So differentiating between um, the, these phases, the tectonic phases which happened uh, throughout the lifetime of this basin becomes a bit more um, yeah, possible and and right. But again, I, I still need to trust it. I still need to understand you know, what is it, is it telling the truth or is it just creating uh, false information uh, for me? And uh, so we thought, why not to combine it with, with a different approach? We, again, we are very proud of our frequency decomposition uh, techniques and our results. So what you see here is a, is a blend of these uh, AI fault indications and, and the frequency decomposition results. And all of a sudden, all these color variations seem to make more sense, right? So they give me information about the lithology, layer thickness, porosity, fluid content, these kind of things that's, that's hidden in the frequency decomp results. And then now I can uh, merge them with, with the similarly detailed uh, inter, uh, information about the faults, about the tectonics. And what I can see here is um, it's kind of more complex, uh, a, a greater understanding, or at least it offers me a chance uh, for a greater understanding of, uh, you know, on day two or day three after I started uh, working with this data set. Let's uh, look at the next slide. So what we see here is, um, is a lucky situation. Yeah, yes, thank you. So what, on the right-hand side, that's a published paper by Kenneth McCormack, uh, Woodside Energy, and Ken McClay, uh, Royal Holloway. They took the challenge of this data set, they interpreted it. I'm pretty sure they spent uh, enough time with, this in, with interpreting this data set. And on the left-hand side of this image, you see the results that were uh, provided by the algorithm. And please understand that I really know it's not the one on the left-hand side is fault indications. So that's not a classic interpretation, if you wish. So an interpreted fault map is different. We, we are not there yet. However, if you can start with that, potentially you have a better chance to eventually arrive at a high quality understanding in a shorter period of time. And uh, for the remaining uh, three minutes and a bit, uh, just give you a few more examples. It's a few more images from the North Sea, the Southern North Sea. That's the Lancelot field, or Lancelot data set uh, that we'll be looking at. It's a small data set, very different to you know than than the Australian data that we've seen so far. Uh, but again, and it's a kind of oldish data set in that sense. So, what we particularly like about uh, uh, this type of approach, combining the stratigraphy, combining uh, with, with the uh, fault information, so the structure information, is that as you slice through, as you go through your data, 
at least I believe you start to, to accept that there's, a, that there's bits of truth in what the uh, artificial intelligence uh, or this foundation network uh, predicted for you. Right, it's the same, just we uh, wanted to make sure you see enough images of this. Well, to, to finish up, um, so th this is where we are right now. And this, I'm, I'm not doing the marketing part, so you can read that if you wish. So what we managed to do, we, we managed to train uh, a foundation network, which seems to be very flexible. It's eager, it, it can learn, that's our uh, experience. It can build on your uh, knowledge, it can incorporate uh, your expertise. And then you can further fine tune and, and the, there's no need for a, you know, millions of labeled data set. So a small number of uh, labeled interpreted faults will already do a pretty good job uh, for you. And again, if, uh, if your workflow still needs it, fault sticks uh, can be extracted with the help of this um, algorithm. And with that, I actually left two minutes for you for questions or for the next presenter. Thank you very much.